unfortunately, it is still a category three hurricane with winds sustained of 120 miles per hour moving east northeast at 15 pressure still at 954. So in terms of the logistics itself, nothing's really changed there. But again, this is expected to make landfall soon. If we can get WSI 2 behind me here, uh, that's a look at the latest imagery with uh, Milton. We are expecting it to make landfall and then move over the Tampa Bay area as we go into tonight. So here's a look at the latest satellite imagery with Milton here. It's going to make landfall just south of Tampa Bay, then cross over central Florida and then weaken as it does so, emerging out towards the Atlantic side as a, a tropical storm. Here's a look at the all the storm reports we've seen so far today from Milton and the majority of those have either been flooding or actually a uh, tornado threat. So we've had a lot of wind, a lot of rain, and I want to hone in here over in Brevard County. We got reports of a tornado, tornado likely, meaning it hasn't been confirmed yet by the National Weather Service, but there was some damage reported of a roof being ripped off of the Wells Fargo building uh, near US-1 and Banana River Boulevard in Cocoa Beach, and there was a tornado warning around that time frame. So again, none of this has been confirmed by National Weather Service because they need to get out and actually look at it. And right now, this is just a mess right now. We're in the thick of things. Here's a look at the eye wall. It's the northern periphery. The eye wall is about to interact and move over land, but I uh, landfall is when the center of the eye, not the eye wall itself moves over land. So we still have a gap about an hour before that happens here. So the center circulation is still offshore. But we're seeing very heavy bands of rain all over central Florida this evening. In fact, so much rain has fallen that basically the entire Orlando Metro, Brevard, Orange, uh, Seminole and Volusia County all under a flash flood warning right now, meaning flooding is either happening right now or is imminent and not just for us that that affects 1.8 million people. But look at this even all across Hillsboro, Pasco, Pinellas and Polk County under flash flood warning as well, affecting over 2 million people. So we have flooding that is likely happening right now in our area. And unfortunately, we are expecting even more rain on the way. And we also have an extreme wind warning, Marquise. Yeah, it just means that uh, across the Tampa region, Ruskin as well, that's where we see these breezy conditions rushing on shore. And you're wondering what speed these winds are. Well, they're just as fast as the center of circulation around Milton. So these could be up to 120 miles per hour across I-75. And what those winds are bringing in, they're not just gusty conditions. It's the storm surge that they're bringing in. And that could be a very devastating detail. That storm surge could possibly rise anywhere between 10 and 15 feet. And oftentimes it's the storm surge that's the most deadly impact for any tor uh, for any. Uh, severe weather events. So in regards to Milton so far, what we've seen across our neck of the woods, right? That includes the National Weather Service offices from Melbourne, Tampa, also uh, uh, Miami. We've seen 98 tornado warnings so far. There could be possibly more across the state of Florida to our north and to our south, but 98 is the number that we have. And nine of these have been confirmed tornadoes. 41 of them have come from the National Weather Service in Melbourne, so we've had a lot of them across the coast as well. We'll take you out towards the coast as we go county by county right now, and one of the bigger impacts that we'll have to worry about, not just today, but also throughout the day tomorrow, is going to be the storm surge. Bilton's going to come on shore and almost ride parallel to the I-4 corridor before exiting off into the Atlantic. And with that being said, what it's going to do on the back end is kick up those category one force winds most likely and increase the storm surge for our Atlantic communities. So that's just another impact that you'll have to worry about after the rainfall does subside. Before that ends, though, we could possibly see four to ten more inches of rain across I-95 out to our east. And now towards the west across the counties of Mary and Sumter and Lake. Some of the bigger details that we're worried about tonight and throughout the morning tomorrow will be the rain. In fact, this is where the heaviest rain showers are likely going to stack up. Certainly locations could possibly see 12 plus inches of precipitation. But for counties like Lake and Sumter, you're going to be close to that eye making its way on shore, so you'll be breezy as well. Those gusts could possibly be upwards of 85 miles per hour. And as we go through our last few counties here and towards the center, here's where we have the 
fastest and strongest wind threat. You'll be much closer to the eye. Gusts could be possibly 80 to 90 miles per hour, but you'll also see in about four to eight inches of rain. So it's the strongest wind threat closer to the eye. But as you move away from it to our northernmost communities, that's where we see the heaviest rain likely going to stack up tonight and through the early morning hours tomorrow. So as we take you through the timeline, Milton is going to make landfall likely within the next hour coming up around that nine o'clock hours when those uh, when the center of circulation comes on shore overnight, though, those hurricane conditions continue with strong, gusty, breezy winds here all widespread across central Florida. In fact, that tropical storm force wind field surrounding Milton could be upwards of 275 miles. So all across nearly the entire state of Florida will feel those tropical storm force winds.